In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the macro view for our U4, U5 program and, and see what the underlying philosophies and ideas are and why we do things the way we do. The first thing we need to keep in mind, we're talking about three, four, and five-year-olds. These are children. And that's going to form the context for everything we're going to talk about and these areas that we're looking at in terms of their, quote, development, unquote. First thing is motor skills. It's running, jumping, hopping, skipping, moving forward, moving backwards, moving sideways, changing speed, changing direction, falling down. All these things are a part of motion, and so our activities are going to be geared up to being very, very active. The kids have got to be up and moving quite a bit. That's in their natural world, natural state of things at this age. Ball manipulation. What we mean by that is, can you make the ball move? Can you start it? Can you stop it? Can you change directions? Can you roll it with the bottom of the foot? Can you touch it with the outside, inside of the foot? And being that we're a soccer club, the ball will be on the ground for the most part, but it's not to just eliminate anything with other body parts, as you'll see in some of the activities later on. Insight. By that, what we mean is, trying to start to develop their soccer vocabulary. And we're talking about really the most simple basic development we can have. Things like this is a cone, this is a disc, this is a ball, over there's a goal, there's a field, things like that. We also start to introduce the ideas of synonyms and antonyms. We don't use those words. Things like in and out, on, off, near, far, inside, outside. And hopefully the kids will start to pick up some of these ideas and we can build on them from there. The social element is really the most important thing at this age. There are going to be kids constantly coming in at different levels of social, social development. And you're going to find children who come from large families or have a lot of exposure uh, to other kids and other environments where they're exposed to a lot of people, they may be a step ahead of some of the others who are single child, first child, things like that. So we want to keep that in mind. The kids should feel relaxed and comfortable, self-confident in this environment. Now, we also have got to keep in mind realistic expectations. And this goes back to the ages. You, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds. Look, none of these kids are playing soccer at this time. They won't be doing that until they're teens. They're simply engaged in activities where they're moving, playing, have a lot of fun. If they tell you they're enjoying it, that, that's a great thing. But you really can't be sure exactly what they're enjoying. They could be just having a good time being out, outside, being around other kids. So we have to keep all of this in mind. These are not professional soccer players. In fact, they're not even soccer players. Each child sets their own pace. When they get tired, they come out of an activity. That's okay. It's not a question that, oh, you're quitting, suck it up, get back in there. doesn't work like that. These three, four, and five-year-olds, they get tired, they get cranky, they get irritable, they get a little upset. If they want to sit out, let them. We have seen on occasion where parents have said, Listen, if you don't get back in there, I'm taking you home right now. Well, that is a parenting decision. And, of course, we defer to your right to make those decisions. But maybe you want to keep in mind that child who comes to the swimming pool for the first time. They might spend an hour, two hours, just watching the other kids going into the pool, getting wet, splashing around. And maybe they don't even go in the first time you take them to a pool. Eventually, the kids go in, and then they start to decide for themselves how much they enjoy it, and how much they want to get involved. We believe in learning as opposed to teaching. We want to avoid the over-the-top direct instruction of you have to do this, you have to do that, this is the correct way to do this, no Johnny, turn the ankle out this way, go here, do that. We want to create an environment where the children feel free to experiment and to experience their own uh, interpretation of what's going on. 
So we create these active environments, give the kids small problems. Can you move the ball from there to there? Oh, that's great. Can you use the outside of your foot to do that? Wonderful. If they don't do it, that's all right. It'll come later. So they need to feel confident that their solutions are going to be acceptable because they certainly are acceptable to them. The sessions look like organized chaos. The environment has to be safe. It needs to be quasi-controlled. But we want to have a lot of activity. The thing we don't want to see are children sitting down like traffic cones themselves where they're just listening and being passive. We want them involved as much as possible and that goes back to this. When they decide they've had enough for the time being, for a few moments, they can take themselves out. That's quite all right. Now in the next two videos we'll look at the U4 and U5 program and sort of how it's set up and organized on its weekly basis.